uh, thank you. Uh, I'd like to start, start with a video that will explain uh, to those who don't know La Ruche uh, how it works. So, uh, but I can uh, fill the time within the time. Thank you to the translator that will have to translate my English to French. Uh, that's the funniest thing I've done this week. Uh, who, who, who already know La Ruche Kidiwi? Already know? Okay, that's. Great. Are you buying every week? <laughs> if not, why? If not, go on. No. Okay. Uh, shall I wait the video? Uh, I, I can present myself. I'm Julia. Uh, I'm in charge of a logistic project uh, with Jeremy. Jeremy, you can uh, hold your hand. Uh, for La Ruche. Uh, for those who don't know La Ruche, it is a decentralized and collaborative platform. So our challenge. Uh, are to uh, are challenges uh, specific of decentralized platform, meaning that uh, in comparison, for example, uh, with the Carrefour, Carrefour, the logistic is centralized. Like they have a platform where they buy product and all the product go to their platform and then they have trucks that are sending all the product to all the different Carrefour the, of friends. Uh, in so La Ruche, so yeah, the video is, yeah, yeah you okay. have to go. Okay. In La Ruche, we had a lot of ruches and a lot of farmers and close to every ruches, you have a, a group of farmers that are in charge of delivering by themselves the ruches. So we are not doing any logistic by ourselves. We are providing tools, we are providing platform to help all the, uh, all this community to work well. And now the video. Mm, no, so the video is not working. Sorry. Ah, okay, so. the video is not working. Yeah. Okay, uh, that uh, okay. So, so, and the PowerPoint. The PowerPoint. Uh, yeah, it's. I think it's coming, right? Ah. I I have to push things, like that. There's a red and a green button. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, I'm going to explain you uh, quickly what is La Roche Kidiwi. So it's a, an FMR market. It's a, a quick two-hour market where farmers are delivering a, a fresh product to the consumer. So how do you build a ruche? Like you're, uh, you're someone and you want to create your own ruche, meaning that you want to uh, organize this uh, quick market. So your role is to, to gather a producer that are going to supply your ruche and a consumer that are going to buy uh, the product from the, the producer. And after that, uh, you'll, uh, you'll launch an online sale. And during this sale, uh, a consumer will be able to pre-order all the product from the producers. And uh, today, after the end of this sale, um, Today, after the end of this sale, uh, during this quick two-hour market, uh, producers come and they uh, give to the consumer uh, the product they have ordered before. Yeah. Can you try the puzzle slide? Awesome. Yeah. I wish could you eat. That's us. <laughs> uh, so these are the three main stakeholders. No, you understand? The producer is in charge of uh, putting his catalog online, and then once the product has been ordered, is in charge of uh, doing all the logistic packing, delivering, and give it directly to the to the consumer. The host is in charge of uh, creating this community to uh, launch the sale and during the collection to make sure everything is going well. And the member, the consumer, you, all of you, uh, he's only, he, does, he only has to uh, buy online and then uh, come uh, meet a great producer and get his uh, incredible fresh product. So um, to speak more about logistics, uh, as you can see, there's uh, something really special in our model. It's that our, our producers, the ones that produce food, are also in charge of all the logistics. Just uh, to give you uh, uh, an idea of how, what is our business, mod business model, we are not uh, buying uh, the product from producer, we are a platform. So what we try to do is uh, the opposite of what supermarkets uh, have been doing during uh, all this year, is letting a uh, producer fix their own price and uh, make sure uh, well, they earn their life uh, uh, correctly. So we are uh, getting between 11 and 12 percent of commission uh, us as a company and the host is getting the same amount for the, all the work of uh, organizing. But most of the money you're giving uh, to La Ruche when you are paying uh, an order is going to the to the farmer. 
and this is uh, how big we are today. And these numbers are here to introduce the second part, why logistics is important and why especially last mile logistics is important. We have more than 1,000 rushes, more than 8,000 uh, active uh, farmers, producers, for us, producer is a farmer or craftsman, meaning people that I uh, create, produce by themselves uh, fresh food. So all these, uh, these numbers, as you can imagine, a lot of uh, the rushes are concentrated in cities and especially in big cities. So all the last mile delivery that for us is the, when the farmer enters the city and have to deliver all his stuff to the rush is a big challenge for us. And it's a big challenge in general for a short food supply chain. Short food supply chain, c'est circuit court. Uh, and I will be using it a lot. Um, it's super long to say. But okay. Uh, what are the, the sort of short food supply chain characteristics? Well, the first of one is that uh, short food supply chain, or at least online short food supply chain, like La Ruches, are quite new. Of course, a farmer has always been doing direct selling uh, in market uh, or directly in the farm or with a map. But the arrival of uh, other short food supply chain like us um, uh, disrupt a little bit uh, this. Why is that? Because as I said it before, farmers are in charge of delivering their, their own stuff and this is new for them. They are, they are not logisticians, they are farmers, but uh, like doing direct selling for them to learn this uh, new job. The second characteristic is that short food supply chain are new and they are uh, super decentralized. There is not someone in the middle who is putting a norm and organizi organizing everything for everyone, no. So we don't have this industrialization that long food supply chain may have, no, uh, and we have limited optimization because we are new uh, and we are decentralized. Uh, so uh, because of that, logistics can represent up to 40% of the cost of the fresh product you are buying, which is huge and which is the thing we have to, to decrease. That's why when you, when you buy directly to producers you're like wow it's 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 direct why why if there's no one between the farmer and me why is it so expensive well because it's super expensive for a farmer to deliver to the city because he's not careful he don't have this super big truck that allow him to reduce uh, the cost by product and the third aspect is that producers and especially farmers don't measure their time. Like if they were, if they were paid uh, like 15 hours, uh, 15 euro a day, nobody of us would be able to eat in France. Farmers work a lot and they don't uh, count their time. And when they start doing their own logistics, the same thing is uh, is happening. <coughs> so their logistic cost is uh, under evaluated. So our key challenge. Uh, at La Ruche and other short uh, all, all the people that are doing uh, distribution channel uh, direct selling is to reduce logistic cost, to ease city delivery. And I says, when I say city delivery, it's last mile delivery. And it, we, in, in, that, uh, in that case, we are sharing uh, Elsa's uh, problematic. And to ensure farmers are owner of their logis logistic. Never we want to, to be like the supermarket, the supermarket have been for farmer and agriculture. Never we want to have a, a big dependency uh, with only one actor that would uh, <coughs> that would uh, not, that would not allow the farmer to negotiate anything. So, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, well, so uh, we have a lot of solutions. That's, that's, that's our baby solution for the moment. The first thing, when the logistic cost is underestimated and when farmers don't have really the notion of what their, their logistic cost, the first thing to do is to make sure they are able to understand the, the real cost. The second thing to do is to ease farmer mutualization. Mutualization is this great thing, super, super we share fest that happened in La Ruche, that uh, you know that farmers are in charge of delivering the Ruche, so they go to from the farm to the Ruche and they deliver the product. And when they go to La Ruche, well, they meet another farmer which is living super close to his farm. And they said, well, let's, let's do only with one truck, no? So take my product this week and I'll take your product next week. That's mutualization. That's uh, one level of optimization that is great for decentralized uh, models and that is working. So it works with two, uh, it works with two farmers, but it can work with three, with four, with five, and we have up to 30 farmers that are mutualizing, 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 uh, yeah? So that uh, we have to ease this mutualization. And you understand when there are 30, it's quite a challenge to, wow, OK, oh, five minutes. Uh, <laughs> and the third thing is to, 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 to 
<coughs> propose professional logistic services. Some firms are able to mutualize, but some not, because they have a too big production, because they don't have time to take us others' product, and they don't just want to delegate all their logistics. So, uh, in addition to the mutualization, we have to facilitate uh, professional logistic services to our farmers. And <laughs> this is uh, all the thing we are doing for the moment. I'm going to say it uh, uh, really quickly. With the IFSTAR and a project which is called Olicosen, we are developing an online tool so that for farmers, producers can calculate date, lo their logistic cost, cost in uh, short food supply chain. It is called uh, Logiku and it will be live now uh, soon and you will be all able to uh, use it. Uh, I'm sure you'll love that. You'll love that. We'll in we are including mutualization feature in uh, La Ruche platform to help farmers uh, organize their uh, mutualization. So more or less we are doing this blah blah car for uh, La Ruche producers. And this is, uh, this is super interesting. Uh, if you're a little bit in the tech, uh, it's great. <laughs> uh, and uh, the last thing is where I can p put the API world in my presentation. Uh, is uh, you c We want, want to ease the transporter APIization with our platform. The only thing is that uh, farmer, when they want to deliver a rouge, they can have a choice of the way they are going to deliver it. Are they doing it by themselves? Are they doing it by mutualization? Or are they delegating their logistic to a professional uh, logistician? And uh, so now is the moment to give you some insight of uh, what is the future of short food supply chain and what are, uh, what f f f to grow short food supply chain. And I'm not only talking about La Ruche, I'm, all, I'm talking about the market, I'm talking about uh, the AMAP and so on. They need these three things. They need interoperability. We don't have a norm that is uh, common to all the short food supply chain. So when, uh, for, for, for example, when a farmer is in an AMAP and a farmer is in La Ruche, you have to upload, to, you have to create two different catalog. That, are, that don't have the same uh, the same norm, and furthermore, he cannot synchronize his stock. So if so, it's double work for him. So we have a real challenge of uh, making interoperable uh, all uh, the the short, the short foot system. The second thing is physical internet, and I don't want to explain that because I'm sure someone is going. Uh, well, we have some expert that, but more or less, physical internet is solve Elsa and our problem. Like we know, we both need to have uh, people delivering things in town. What we would want to be able to is to put our product in the same truck and don't have to worry about that. And we want a system that allows us to put our product uh, in it and not to worry about that. And the third thing is logistic API. That's what, that's what I was doing uh, saying before. Make sure that all uh, kind of logistician, it can be a guy with his bike or it can be the shell, are able to be uh, are able to provide their services to our uh, producer. So uh, what we are doing for, for the moment, for the first one, there is Data Food Consortium, which is working on that, on creating uh, a nomenclature for all the short food supply chain. A lot of actors of uh, online short food supply chain are, are working on that, uh, and it is led by uh, Open uh, Food Network. The second thing for about uh, physical internet, uh, well, you'll learn more about that later, it's super interesting. And for the logistic app, we, uh, we need a diversity of logisticians and they can be adapted to what uh, fresh food delivery mean. Uh, Elsa told it, uh, super, super, uh, said it super, super bien before. Uh, <laughs> it's not the same thing delivering a, uh, a, a plate from a restaurant than delivering a fresh fruit from a, from a vegetable grower or meat from a meat grower. So uh, that, uh, that uh, I did a great time, no? Great timing, no? Okay. <laughs> So that's it uh, for La Ruche. I hope you understood uh, what I mean, because I'm not... Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we had the whole morning about that. We have time for one question. So be the first, be the good one. Pressure here, right? All the pressure is on you. Right? Suspense, what is the only question that will be asked? Hi, I'm Chris. So I would like to hear a bit more about Data Food Consortium. It's interesting because me as a consumer, I would like to buy good food it doesn't really matter if it comes from La Ruche or Open Food Network. And for the farmers, like you said, uh, it would be great just to have one platform because he doesn't really care where he sold his carrots, it's just that it gets sold. So where are you and what's the ambition and what's the vision with Data Food the Consortium? 
Great question. Well, uh, there are great article from uh, Miriam Bourré on that. So she's uh, the great expert, and I'm only I'm only stealing her, her fame now. But the idea is like if you're a farmer and you want to sell in La Ruche, and, or you want to sell maybe in two years in épicerie, and you want to to sell in comptoir local, well, you can uh, download the catalog from La Ruche and upload it luego uh, after in épicerie and after, uh, upload it after in uh, in Open Food Network. It's too easy, really. And when you are selling at, you have your uh, three channel of distribution. And when uh, someone is buying at La Ruche, you have a global stock management. So it's uh, so uh, the so this uh, unit is not available on uh, your other distribution channel. So it's for the moment we are just saying like uh, what is the unit kilogram or you know, we are like at basic steps. But our ambition is big <laughs> because because we need that and that's something I, I want to end with. Uh, Short food supply chain, we are a lot of small actors, and there will never be one big one. There will never be an Amazon that that in everything, and we hope uh, it will never be like that. The, the worst thing that can happen is that supermarket gain the market, and at the end, all the consumers are going to buy their fake local, uh, fake local uh, uh, food or fake uh, ecological food at Carrefour. And that would be the worst, because it would be going back to what was uh, the time where farmers were, were being killed by supermarket. We believe at La Ruche and, and the other, the other competitors too. We believe that we need to be. A, there need to be a lot of us uh, proponing alternative distribution channel. And to be strong, we have to work together to ease farmer life. Because at the end, the high cost of our product are due to our unoptimized logistic for the moment. And we will be optimizing the logistic when we will have this interoperability and this cross-channel uh, uh, collaboration. Thank you. Thank you.